What's up, Calc gang? All right, so we got this cool problem right here. Look at this beautiful graph I made. Okay, so uh, you got these three balls and they're gonna collide in one point and then they're all gonna stick together and start moving in a positive x direction at half a mile or half a meter a second. And it wants us to find um, you know, the x component of the initial velocity in order to make that happen. So in order to do that, we need to use the momentum formula, right? So you know, P is equal to mass times velocity, right? We got that down. Okay, and another thing we know is that the sum of the P initial is gonna be equal to the sum of the P final, right? The momentum is conserved, basically. So to, in order to do this, we're gonna to need to find out you know, the momentum. So let's start with part A. So part A is, um, what was the X component of this C ball, basically the velocity of the C, be in order for when all three objects collide, they start moving in this direction, positive X, at half a meter a second. Um, so basically, we go back to this formula, right? So P initial, P final. So impulse final, or not impulse, I just did a couple impulse bumps. So uh, momentum final, so we can say that the momentum final, because they're all gonna stick together, they're all kind of like part of one big unit, we can think of them as one big thing. So this is gonna be equal to mass times velocity of the final unit. So we know the velocity is half a meter a second, right? And the mass is gonna be equal to all of them combined, right? So it's gonna be 0 0.3 plus 0 0.2 plus 0 0.5, which is 0 0.1. So this is equal to 0 0.1 times 0 0.5. So then we need to find what the sum of the uh, the initial momentum is, and it just in the x direction. So in order to do that, we need to use this formula for all three of these. Okay, so what are we looking at here? So let's start with A, right? So A is going in the negative x direction at 1.5 meters a second. So what we can say about this is it's gonna be negative mass of 0 0.02, and then velocity of 1.5, right? Okay, so let's go to B. B is at an angle. So we need to calculate just the x part of it. So the x is going to be its, um, it's going to be its velocity, but then it's going to be the um, cosine of 60, right? Because it's just trying to find the x component. What we're saying here is, um, let's look at this triangle a little closer. So this is its velocity, 0 0.5, and we just want this part, right? We want to see what we want to see what just this point is, and then this is 60. So we know that um, cosine of theta is equal to um, adjacent, so it's going to be this x that we want over hypotenuse, which is 0 0.5. So then, of course, you move this over, and then we're going to get x that equals 0 0.5 cosine of theta. Okay, so then we can go over here. So um, this is also going the opposite direction from what we want. So this is also going to have a negative sign. So its mass is uh, 0 0.3, 0 0.03, excuse me. Its velocity is going to be 0 0.5 cosine. 60, right? Okay, perfect. So now that's just the x component of that. So then we can go into C here. So for C, we know it's mass, uh, and this is going in this direction, the, x, the same direction as the force final, or you know, the, the momentum it is in the final. So this is going to be a plus. So that's 0, 0 0.05. But then we want to try and find its x velocity. So this is just velocity of x, right? Okay, so here's our equation right here. Uh, we have one thing we don't have, so basically all we have to do is, um, you know, add these to the other side. Let's see if I did it here. Uh, I did not, but you're just gonna have to trust me on this. If you solve this out, basically what you do is you would add this to the other side, you'd have this to the other side, and then you divide it by 0 0.05 just to get this by itself. And this is gonna be equal to 1.75 meters a second. Which that means that's how fast C has to be moving in this, in the X direction only, in order for this uh, mechanism to happen. Okay, so this is part one. Okay, so let's do it again for part two. Uh, this part is a little simpler. Okay, so now it's asking what does the Y component of C have to be in order for the same thing to happen? For the ball to go this way, what does the Y component have to be? So thinking about this, it's uh, it's momentum final in the y direction, right? If it's going straight along the x-axis, there's not gonna, it's not gonna have any momentum at all on the y. And what that means is that the momentum final, this is equal to zero, okay? So that means that the, um, the sum of the, uh, the momentums of the beginning part have to equal zero. And let's do that. So let's go ahead. So this is, let's start with A. Okay, so A, 
is also going over right along the x-axis, right? Now, what would its, um, what would its you know, momentum with respect to the y-axis be if it's just going along the x-axis? It's going to be zero, right? So we can say that this is zero. Uh, I'll just start here. So zero for x, or zero for a. So let's go to b. So b we're trying to find with respect to the y. So we know that it's moving down, so there's going to be a negative. We know its mass is 0 0.03, and then its velocity is going to be you know, 0 0.05. But it's not going, it's on an angle again. Remember how we had to do cosine for the last part? So this part is going to be instead of cosine, because it's not the x, it's going to be the y. So this will be sine of 60. You can do the same thing you did here, except replace the sine and the opposite over adjacent, or opposite over hypotenuse. So this is going to give us the y component. But then we want the, uh, the y component of c. So this is going up against the motion, basically. They're fighting against each other, so this is plus. So 0 0.05, and then it's going to be the, uh, the angle, or not the angle, but uh, my mind is blinking right now, the velocity, right? So what is the velocity going to be? Well, let's just say b of y for now. And then this is going to be equal to 0. So then what you can do is you can subtract this from this side, move it over, see if I did this. Yeah, so it'll be 0 0.05 is equal to, and this is negative, so it'll be positive 0 0.03 times 0 0.05 sine of 60. Uh, did I get all that right? Wait, where the, oh, this is not a 0 0.5. This is velocity, this is 0 0.5. Okay, ignore that, I hope you uh, caught that mistake. So I'm like this, 0 0.5, do this all out. Uh, I don't know why I missed a velocity here, so you're gonna divide by 0 0.5 on both sides. And it'd be a y is equal to 0 0.26 meters a second. Okay, so we have our two components of this ball here for this mechanism. The 1.75 in the x direction like that, and 0 0.26 in the positive direction like that. Okay, so the final part. What must the uh, velocity pound, so it says use the velocity we found, and it wants to find the change in kinetic energy used in the system, right? So the change in kinetic energy, right? That's going to be equal to, you know, the starting, or it's going to be the final, you know, the sum of the final, uh, why did I do that? The sum of the kinetic energy at the end, final, minus the sum of the kinetic energy initial. Why did I keep doing that? I keep putting Fs instead. Final. Okay. Or not. Okay. It's a weird thing. Okay. Let's erase this. Okay. Okay, so the change in kinetic energy is the kinetic energy at the end minus the kinetic energy at the start of this. So let's see how much we changed. So let's use the kinetic energy formula. K is equal to one half mass velocity squared, right? So we can go ahead and just basically do this. So sum of Ke is equal to, so the final part, so it's gonna be one half, the mass of it all, which is 0 0.1, right? And then, um, the velocity at the end is 0 0.5 squared. Uh, 0 0.5 is the, the speed that it moves out, if you remember from the question. Okay, I'm making sure I'm doing this right. You know what I mean? It's asking for uh, change. Yeah, okay. So then you're gonna subtract this. Uh, I'm gonna start moving a little bit here. <laughs> so from, we're gonna plug this in. So we need to do this for all of ours. So the mass, let's start with A, is 0 0.02. And then the velocity is 1.5 squared. And then you're going to subtract the other one. So let's start with B. So 1 half 0 0.03, 0 0.5 squared minus, and then C. Um, if you want to get the magnitude of this velocity, uh, it's going to be minus 1 half. The mass of it is 0 0.05. And then its velocity is we have its y component and its x component. So we have like basically the two parts of the triangle, right? And if we want to find the hypotenuse, you're going to take the square root of you know a squared plus b squared, right? So what you can do here is um, I'm just gonna this is gonna be the square root of um, 1.75 squared plus 0.26 squared. That's what goes there. Okay, so we have this big number formula here. Make sure I plugged it all in right, you know. Yeah. Okay. So if you solve all these, just Plug in all the numbers to your calculator. Um, you're going to get this change in kinetic energy is equal to 0 0.09, negative 0 0.09 joules. Okay.
That's how you solve this kind of problem. Um, yeah. So basically, you just have to look at it in components, basically. Just think and break it down into all the simplest forms, and that's how you get these answers. So yeah, good luck on your physics homework, guys.